So let's have a quick look at some worked examples now. Here's this function that I'm giving you. Actually, we'll scroll just up so you can see that theory there just in case you're madly writing it down, okay? Um, here's an inequality that I'm asking for you to solve. Um, and you can see that first term there, x cubed means this is gonna be a bit of a wiggly graph, okay? Um, and you've got x cubed minus three x squared is less than four x. So I'm gonna follow my own advice. I'm gonna solve this question by getting everything on one side and making the right-hand side zero. In this case, you can see all I need to do is subtract 4x from both sides. So that gives me this, okay? Now, I've got the left-hand side as um, kind of the business end of things, right? I need to graph this guy over here and then search for the place where, look at the direction of inequality, where the graph is below the x-axis, where it's negative, okay? So I'm gonna try and graph this thing. Uh, I'm gonna try and graph y equals x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4 x. So hopefully, I know it's a little while ago now, almost two whole weeks, but you're reflexively looking at this and thinking, I should factorize this, right? So there's a common factor of x, we'll take that guy out. That leaves me with a quadratic in the brackets, and can you go ahead and tell me what's the pair of numbers that's going to help me factorize this? Can anyone type it in there in the chat window for me so I know that you're on the same page with me? What pair of numbers can we use to factorize it? can see an answer come in. Let's have a think about it carefully. I want, remember, it's a pair of numbers. They add to negative three, they multiply to negative four. Okay, yeah, we're getting there. Um, thumbs up. Well done, Jason, you fixed yourself up. So I'm getting x take away four, x plus one. So it's all factorized now. From this, I can read off that there are going to be three intercepts, right? I'm gonna get an intercept at x equals zero, I'm gonna get one at x equals four, and then I'm also gonna get one at x equals negative one, okay? Now, this is enough information for me. Um, I can go ahead to my pre-prepared set of axes here. I can pop these intercepts on, and then I can work out what the shape of this is roughly going to be. Uh, let's see here, if I put on a rough scale, let's make that negative one and then zero, one, two, three, four. So I'm getting an intercept here, here, and here negative one, that's zero, and that's gonna be four. Okay, now this is a cubic, so I'm expecting this graph is gonna wiggle up and down between these intercepts, and you can go ahead and test a value. Again, if you wanna think about how we did this with rational functions, you can test a very large value um, positively or a very large value negatively, which will tell you that on the left-hand side, you're gonna have very negative values, and on the right-hand side, you're gonna have very positive values. So very roughly, I'm gonna try and thread the needle through my points. And um, you know what, That's it's not beautiful. You can see I slightly missed my intercepts, but the part of the graph that I'm interested in is, where am I above the axis, where am I below? Can I tell that from this graph? And the answer is, absolutely I can. There's enough um, of the shape there that I, and enough information from the intercepts that I can tell what's going on. Having a look back at this question, um, I wanna know when is this graph, x cubed minus three x squared minus four x, when is it, remember, below the x-axis, when is it negative, okay? And what I'll do is I'll literally highlight this on my graph. And if you haven't been using colors when you've been graphing, um, I highly encourage you to do so. It just makes it clearer for you to know what's going on. This part of the graph is below the x-axis and so is this part of the graph. So all I need now are the x values that give me uh, those blue sections of the graph. So let's have, a look at, uh, let's have a look at this section over here on the left. Um, the boundary there is negative one, right? That's, that's the spot over there where I stop and I want everything to the left of that, everything to the left of negative one. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that as x is less than negative one. There's the first part. And then when I have a look at this section in here, it starts at zero and then it goes all the way over to four. So I would say zero, this is this section down here, is less than x is less than four and I'm done. That's it. I would say it's x is less than negative one or from zero is less than x is less than four. There are my boundaries, okay? Now a quick question that should be uh, pointed out. Um, you might notice my inequalities there. Um, they don't actually include the boundaries negative one or zero or four. Um, I haven't written, don't write this. Um, I haven't written x is less than or equal to negative one. I haven't written zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to four. 
how could I tell that that was, um, you know, I should get, not include the boundary? And the answer is, have a look back at the original question. You see the original question doesn't include the boundary, so my answer will not include the boundary either. But we will be careful with that as you'll see in a second. So let me get rid of this. There is my answer right there. I'll just highlight it in orange so you can see it really clearly. Um, and I use the word or rather than the word and because there's no x value that can be less than negative one and also simultaneously between zero and four. You're either one or the other. So that's why I use the word or rather than and. And I use the word or rather than a comma because a comma makes it ambiguous whether you mean or or and. Okay, just a minor point there. Thanks, Zachy. Uh, you might remember the very first thing that I did was um, I took the original equation, this guy here, right? And then I, uh, I, I wanted the right hand side to be zero because it's easy to think about you're just above and below the x axis. But I want to just show you really quickly that these really are equivalent questions. This guy that we started with uh, and this guy that we've solved here. Okay, have a look at uh, what Desmos says about the way that we just solved the graph. Okay, here is x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x. It's obviously a better looking graph than mine, um, but it is essentially the same thing. Same intercepts, same overall shape. Um, I would say the scale is a lot more accurate, but when I'm trying to work out where plus and minus are, um, the scale is not as important. I just want to know where it's above the axis, where it's below. Okay, and you can see uh, it's the same, it's the same sections uh, here. Wow, that was fatter than I realized. Uh, here and here. Right, so you still got the same solution, okay? Now, what would it look like if I tried to draw the question as originally presented? x cubed minus 3x squared is less than 4x. Well, what it means is you've got this guy over here, which is a particular function, x cubed minus 3x squared. I could have asked you to graph that as well. And then you've got this other function over here, orange, 4x, we could graph that too. And what you're asking is when is that that one on the left hand side, which I've highlighted in pink, when is it less than the one on the right hand side, which I've highlighted in orange, okay? Well, this is what they both look like. Let's just have a go over here. These are the two functions, right? So when you have a look at this, we're asking when is that cubic one, when is it beneath the straight line one, the linear one, right? And you can see if I highlight, let's, uh, let's go with orange, uh, over here there's a section where the cubic is beneath the straight line. And then there's also this section over here where the cubic is below the straight line. Now, if you have a look at the x values that sort of correspond to that, if you just draw some um, dotted lines here, look, that's negative one. And then here is zero um, all the way over to four. So you're getting the identical solution, but I hope you recognize that, at least in my brain, that thing on the left is a lot more simple to conceptualize than the thing on the right. Um, the thing on the right requires a lot more technical accuracy to actually draw it properly, whereas the thing on the left, um, we're much better at doing confidently. Okay, 